Good morning, Hughes Hearth Heroes. This is uh, Mr. Hearth here again. We are doing Flip 4 today. Today is March 7th, 2014. The topics we're covering are rational functions and asymptotes, uh, but we're going to really focus around their applications today. Um, today's going to be a little different. I'm going to be going through a number of different sites and web pages, um, showing you some things that I've researched and found. So just take notes as you find the, um, the key elements. I'll try and highlight as much as I can. Uh, but I'm not going to be working on any problems this time. So it is going to be different. So of course, this is, all goes back to our lovely saying of, holy shift, check out the asymptote on that mother function. And as you can tell, there is a Facebook page dedicated toward this that um, doesn't really have too much on it. But I uh, just want to let you know that, yes, this is something that is out there. So in order to get this background and understand what the meaning of this phrase is, which we will come back to at the end, we'll start with a, what a rational function is. A rational function is simply um, stated as a function that is, uh, can be written as a ratio of two functions. Honestly, everything that we've worked with is a rational function. Um, rational functions that we want to call rational functions though um, either have like the swimming pool problem where there's a couple of fractions or in particular um, you'll see a lot of like these kind of functions where there are, are a polynomial over polynomial where there's a variable in the denominator. When you get that den variable in the not denominator that's where you start creating these dashed lines which are asymptotes, okay? And so this is an example of a rational function down here um, and one that is given by this function. So I'd like to give a little bit of an explanation in the background as to what some real-world applications of asymptotes are or uh, rational expressions. So here's a little YouTube clip we're going to watch together for the next uh, minute and 50 seconds. rational expression, one of the most feared topics in this class. Today we'll be looking at the uses for rational expressions because the number one question I get in this class is where will I use rational expressions in the real world? Are they just used to torture students or do they have real practical use? Well, we're going to go over some of those right now. No doubt when you're driving around town, you see bridges and overpasses. Well, rational expressions are used in two ways with bridges and overpasses. Number one, to help create the beautiful look of a bridge. But secondly, they're used to help keep them safe, so when you drive over it or under it, your car won't fall through. Rational expressions are used to design roofs and ceilings so water doesn't come in. Maybe there's a particular hotel you like to see, and the architecture of that to design that was done by rational expressions. Rational expressions are also used in pharmacology and by pharmacists. You see, with every prescription, the pharmacist and the doctor must know not only what they're prescribing, but who they're prescribing it to. This goes particularly for children's medications. If you'll look at an over-the-counter children's medication, you'll see a chart that says they take so much if they're a certain weight or a certain age. And this is very important for the doctor and for the pharmacist to understand, to be able to know how much to prescribe to each individual patient. So I hope you took down a couple examples of where rational functions happen in the real world. They're typically dealing with things that are fraction-based, like our uh, swimming pool problem. So if we start looking into asymptotes now, asymptote, uh, we started to define in class, and if you want a really clear definition, um, we can think of it like this. An asymptote is, a, is of any kind of curve or line is a line, well, it has to be curve. A asymptote of a curve is a line such that the distance between the curve and the line approaches zero as they tend to infinity. So as we kind of get close, as we go out towards the edges of graphs, graphs will approach the asymptote. Right now that little monster you're hearing in the background is my son waking up, so I'm probably going to have to pause and continue this. Um, I will be right back. Say good morning. 
Say hi. It's not. Can you wave? Can you wave to mommy? Can you blow her a kiss? It's not. Uh. It is on. It can you just give me a wink? Different. Can one wink. Give, give me one wink and then we'll go. Wait. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Back to real stuff in a second. And I'm back. Now that I got the family out the door, uh, let's talk again about asymptotes. Again, it's uh, a symptote of a curve is a line such that the distance between the curve and the line approaches zero as they tend to infinity. The way I think of this is as you get towards the outside of the graph, the graph is going to approach a line. So in this case, this graph is approaching this line here. It's approaching the y-axis here, the y-axis here, and the x-axis out towards here. Um, you can even cross an asymptote eventually as long as you eventually approach it. Okay. Um, so let's do some applications now. Uh, if I went to my Pinterest page and just typed in asymptote, and I get all these interesting architectural buildings um, that look cool and do have some asymptotic principles to them and that got me interested and so I went to this company's website it's called Asymptote Architecture and they sure enough have all kinds of art that they use um, and if you go to their website they, they have a little bit more in the about feature about how they use different engineering and mathematical principles and are, are you know design designing with uh, new elements um, day in and day out and if you go to their main page their their work page you'll see all these different kind of interesting architecture pieces uh, one in particular I wanted to talk about was this building um, this is a, all these buildings on their side are all real they're not just like made up or imaginary um, this one is in Abu Dhabi United Arab Emirates Abu Dhabi um, over over the seas. Uh, this is an actual building and this is a race course. So this is a race car is going underneath here. And so if you were to take this and kind of flip it around, can you see it? There's like a curve here and a curve kind of coming this way. So if you imagine the building as the asymptotes themselves, then you actually wind up with our graph that is just like what we did in class, which would look like this. Like if this is our x and y axis, then our graph wound up looking like this on this side and like this on this side. And that's kind of what I'm seeing here going on. So I do see some asymptotic nature to some of these buildings and these designs. Uh, to continue, a couple more. Um, there is a pre-calculus page by a teacher that made uh, other students do all these things, which is something I'm looking to try and do potentially. Um, probably not this year, but uh, just a simple light structure. And a student found that this is the function that models the um, light structure within their house. Um, so to end, you know, rational functions do deal with fractions, and fractions set us up for dealing with some extensive kind of math later on. Um, some of those could be something like limits. Uh, it could be something like summations, and it also could be something like derivatives and integrals. And so each of these advanced topics in math, you'll have to know some of the fundamentals of asymptotes and rational functions to deal with them. Um, so in the end, here is where I want to leave you and I want to give you a little bit of an informal assignment. Here is like a word wall, the, similar to ones that we generated in class, all around the word rational functions. And if you look at this, I think that I could add anywhere from two to four words to this that are not currently present. So I'd like you to think about this, that by the time this video is due, which is Tuesday, March 11th, um, see if you can have this as part of your notes. What words would you add to this to that are not included? Okay, so please do that. And again, the notes are due Tuesday the 11th, and we'll review this video with the notes on Friday the 14th, which is Pi Day. So um, hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, please take some notes and write some questions, and uh, I will see you in class. Thanks.